In this lesson, we're gonna talk about four ways that you can spice up your riffs and make them sound nice and bluesy. Let's get into it. Hey there, John here with the Blues Guitar Institute, and this is your Tuesday Blues, and today we're gonna to take that stock, real stale sounding riff that you just heard, and we're gonna turn it into something kinda of nice and bluesy with a few tips. Now, I'm playing this out of the key of E, and I'm playing with a flat pick because I found one. Now, let's get right into it. We're taking the, uh, let's take that stock riff and really just kind of set a bass line real quick. What I'm doing is pumping out with a shuffle feel, all right, so we've got that bop, 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 is that's our eighth note pulse, our feel there. And what I'm doing is chugging on the E for the first three notes, and then open third string, first fret third string, then to the E on the second fret of the fourth string. Then we go back to the G, and then finish up on that E, the octave there. So that's what it is, basically. And maybe there's nothing wrong with that, but to me it lacks a lot of life and it certainly doesn't sound as bluesy as it could. So the first tip that I've got for you is let's play up this minor third to major third move. It's done a lot in the blues. And what we can do is just kind of coax some emotion out of that by using a technique like a hammer-on. Hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides, those legato styles of playing are very vocal because you're not just playing from fret to fret. What you're doing is just kind of like coming into a note with some articulation that sounds really vocal, it sounds a lot like the human voice. And that helps to add some expression and emotion to a note. And we're gonna do that right here just by hammering into that first fret, that G sharp, rather than picking it, okay? So we're gonna pick it once and hammer down. So this is what we have. All right, so it's a little more bluesy just by doing that, but the cool thing is, like I said, this is a very expressive technique, so we can really play with the hammer-on and how we do the hammer-on, and that kind of helps to put your voice on things. So you may do a very quick hammer-on into that first fret. That's something that I definitely like to do, and you're gonna hear those you know, super quick, almost like a pickup note, the G being a pickup note. Um, you're gonna hear that stuff a lot, and the, to the extent that you vary the timing and vary the amount of force that you come down with, uh, that, that helps to put your sonic stamp on it. So let me just play through, I'll play through without the hammer-on at all, and then we'll start playing with the hammer-on. Did you hear how those last couple were really quick? We really just kind of punched into that and then went straight to that E before finishing out the riff. So really excellent way to dress up your riffs and make them sound a little bluesy. I bet in any riff that you come up with, there's gonna be a spot where you can add a cool hammer on and then you can even play with the articulation and the way you perform that hammer on. Great way to add some blues to your riff. All right, the next thing that we're gonna look at to really dress up your riffs is gonna be this blues bin idea. And what I'm really talking about is these microtonal bends. They're usually notated as a quarter step, but really to me, it's just taking a note. We've got a good opportunity here with this low G on the sixth string third fret to just take that note and pull it slightly out of tune. When I say pull, I just mean directionally. I'm just bringing it toward the floor, right? So, and the reason should be obvious, if you push it, you're gonna push it right over the top of the fretboard. So the opposite would apply here on the top string, for instance. But what we're doing is just pulling down, just with my finger, that way, okay? and it produces a note that kind of scoops sharp. And again, that's something that's very vocal. You can do that with your voice, and we can get in between these frets with techniques like this, like a bend, okay? So we're gonna bend, 
And again, it's that quarter step bend, but don't try to nail a perfect quarter semitone. That's just, uh, it's too much, right? Um, you know, I think, I think what you gotta do is just bend it slightly sharp until it sounds good to you, okay? So let's take a look at this riff and we'll keep the hammer on idea in there so we can kind of build a cool little progression um, of, of bluesiness, if you will. But what we're gonna do is now add in that slight blues bend on the sixth string. Here we go. All right, notice we did it both places where that low G shows up in the riff, okay? You don't have to do that, you can vary this, but it's a real natural spot to just take that G and bend it slightly sharp. And it, it can be kind of subtle, but try it on your guitar and I think you'll hear that it adds that little vocal style nuance that makes this sound just a little more bluesy. Bluesier? All right, next up, we're gonna talk about trills. Now, trill is just this little rapid um, alternation between two notes, okay? And you probably can hear something like that. You've heard that, it's a great sort of build up moment, but you can throw these cool little trills into your riffs. And what I'm gonna do here is demonstrate that with the open third string and the first fret of the third string, all right? So that minor third, major third. We're just gonna throw in a little bit of that. It can be very subtle, uh, and that's totally fine because with hammer-ons and pull-offs, we normally like the volume to remain pretty constant, and that's just representative of good hammer-on pull-off technique. Uh, but here, I kind of want the volume to die out a little bit. Again, we're going for something kind of expressive, so I'm just gonna do a really quick trill, something like that, in place of where we were just doing that hammer-on before. And we're gonna keep that quarter step or that microtonal bend happening. So let's take a look at the riff. We added this little trill here, the open fourth string and the second fret fourth string, okay? And it's really just that rapid hammer-on pull-off and it sounds really bluesy when you sneak it into a riff like that. Now, word of caution, I'm exaggerating things by doing it in every possible spot that I really can here in this riff. What you wanna do is use anything that's that expressive as sparingly as you can. You want to use it as kind of the secret sauce, the thing that dresses up your playing a little bit. But if you do it all the time, then it starts to sound like a trick and it really loses its effectiveness. All right, now let's talk raking. It's really that scratching sound that you hear. And we're going to throw that in to this riff in a couple of places. One is a little bit of a bigger motion. It's this scratch, just an up down with my hand uh, sort of laying over the strings, but not fretting anything on the fretboard and you do that and you can just scratch through the strings and it can provide some extra rhythmic content and just really kind of keep you in the groove or do something you know kind of cool kind of special here the other is definitely a little more subtle what I'm gonna do is rake into a single note this um, E as we end the riff and it, the rake is really happening over this muted fifth string all right, very subtle, uh, but it can add some power to that note when you sort of step into it with a rake, okay? So now let's hear this thing and we're gonna dress it up with some rakes. Here we go. four different ways to add some bluesiness, add some articulation to your notes in a single real stale sounding riff. It doesn't take much to kind of dress things up and make it sound a little bluesier. And that's what we're after. Now, if you dig this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and come on back here next Tuesday because I've got more cool acoustic blues lessons coming out every Tuesday. Tuesday blues, y'all. That's what it's all about. So come on back. I'll see you then. Until then, play on. <laughs>